everybody. This is Teen Title Talk with Erin and Courtney. This is the podcast where two librarians discuss two YA books every two weeks. Today we'll be talking about the two graphic novels. Uh, I read Slep- uh, Sleepless. Sleepless, gosh. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> Sleepless. Thursday. <laughs> it is. Sleepless by Sarah Vaughn, Leila Del-, Del Duca, Alyssa Sala, and Darren Bennett. And, and Courtney, what did you read? Yes, I read Kiss Number 8 by Colleen... A.F. Venable and Ellen T. Crenshaw. Awesome. As always, I'm a huge fan of graphic novels. I can't wait to dive into these. But first, we have to reach into the jar of teen angst Uh, and answer painful questions. As always. All right. First up is, was there something about yourself you tried to hide? Too smart? Birthmark? (laughs) So, I guess this was written in... (laughs) To Facebook. Um, so the question being, was it something within or without? <laughs> was there something about myself I tried to hide? This is a hard one. This is tough because I think, what is the human condition? Everything you tried but to hide. trying right, to I hide know. something. something. Sure. Always. Your whole life, I would imagine. That's true. Although I feel now I'm more of an open book. I think so. But, um, well, I did indeed have a physical thing that i tried to hide which was the fact that this mole on my face grows hairs amazing and i was extremely (laughs) self-conscious of it and i would put my like hand (gasps) over my like when i would sit there and i would like hold my hand over it um and then i just started plucking the hairs out yeah or whatever or whatever and did anybody ever comment on it though or was this just like you worrying (laughs) i think it was just me worrying gotcha no. That someone might say something. Because there's just, like, three dark hairs that just poke out of it. I found, like, a silver hair on my <laughs> face just recently, and I was like, I am getting old, and this is happening. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, so I definitely did not enjoy that part of my Got it. face. Got it. I had, like, <laughs> a... I mean, I, I feel like... W- I was thinking about this. I'm like, what didn't I hide? I don't know. Obviously, whenever I had feelings i hid them oh well sure (laughs) yes i never told a single soul if i like had a crush on them or liked them right so that was what i was thinking and then if like someone said i remember there i was asked out a couple times instead of acting like a normal person i was like shut up or something like that like (laughs) feelings like yeah i just lash out instead I literally remember being in algebra class and, and this guy behind me was like, do you, do you want, hey, you want to go out? And I was like, shut up, loser. <laughs> wow, I bet that made him feel really he good. He actually turned out to be an abusive guy. And so I, think you made, I the right made the right call. And I was right to call him loser. Wow. I. That story took a turn <laughs> I was not expecting. <laughs> so, yeah, I, but I, instead of like having a feeling, I would just lash out aggressively in any way I could, which is probably still what I do actually now that I think about it. <laughs> mm, yeah, I've seen a little bit of an aggressive Bottle streak. it down and then lash out. And then let's let it come and right then out. Try to. You can harness that. Maybe. It's sort of a superpower. Rage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep it bottled up though. Mm-hmm. All right. Where was your favorite place to hang out? We didn't have like a. A hangout. There were some people who did naturally, like the Hannaford parking lot uh, what? after hours, Ugh. like sitting on your car and oh, okay, you know, like whatever. I don't That's know. Sad. I didn't go in there small, because well, I was gonna say in small towns, yeah. Well, there's not a lot to do or places to go. All of the places to go were closed by yes. like eight or nine. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> so yeah, so that was one place that kids did hang out. Um, but like your living room yeah did you like to hang out there i did yep <laughs> yep we did that um my friend's basement mm-hmm. hung out there and played was it a like lot. a finished basement we're like uh, well so or just like the garage basement it was somewhere in between okay they had like the like a flat carpet on the ground mm-hmm. but i think it was mostly just on like the cement mm-hmm. and there was a couch and there were walls and everything but it didn't feel like upstairs okay it gotcha. definitely felt had, like a basement. Felt like a basement that had been, you know, modified. Nice. They had a ping pong table yes. that we would play extreme ping pong, oh which was just a bunch of ping pong balls that you would just yep, smack against yeah, the walls. I, think I played and, that. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we played a lot of Mario Kart. Awesome. And also a ton of Goldeneye. Is that a game? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm so bad with games. <laughs> 
we played Goldeneye a lot, and I'm still really bad at it. But really? the I so it's like the N64 version. Okay. And I don't know at all what you're saying, but I yep, like it. Yep, sure. Um, <laughs> and it's a f- like a shooting game. Got it. Where you, it's like a it's 007 first, first James Bond Goldeneye okay. shooting yeah. game. Got it. And you get to choose your character, mm-hmm. and there's like splits the screen into four different screens. But so like nowadays, you have like a 50 inch television uh, or right. something. Yes, it's easy. Instead, it was this tiny. It little... was <laughs> minuscule little. <laughs> thing in the basement compa- in comparison but we managed oh of course and the idea we always played the golden gun version all of you mm-hmm. gamers out there i'm not do, a gamer but this is just one that i played i don't think so i'm sure they do anyway you can get the golden gun and that is like a what yeah that means the first shot puts dispatches your opponent whoa other, you can also do slappers only, which okay. is just hitting people with hands, which is <laughs> one of my favorite ways to play. You just slap people. It is very entertaining. Oh, it anyway, amazing. Yeah, that brought back a lot of memories. I'm going to have to tell them to listen to this. Okay. Did you hang out anywhere fun? I hung out. You know what? I don't know. I mean, my house was fine, but... Um... One thing that's popping to mind is I worked in the theater a lot, and it was either the Valley Players or the school theater or sometimes the little theaters around the area that needed lighting help. And there was, like, this time, there's a special time before anybody gets there, and you test the lights. And so, and I just always remember this, even into college, it's my favorite time. So you're in the theater, it's totally quiet. Like, the whole place is empty. And you've got, like, the velvet curtains, and it's all, like, mm. echoey. And you just turn the lights on. I always would turn them on, like, 10%, all of them, to see if there were any that were burnt out. And so, and it's very peaceful. Oh, did, were you ever tempted to just climb up on that stage and do a little song and dance? I mean, I I would once climbed up there, but <clears throat> not ever wanted to do a song and dance, because I would... hate that. <gasps> That would be my first instinct. Like, I'm alone in a theater? Hey, you know what? That's, someone did have that instinct because I actually walked in and a teacher was dancing by themselves on the stage one time. And yes. I was like, I'm going to stand quietly in the shadows till this <laughs> is over. <laughs> she did finish. It was a lovely ballroom dance. And I, oh my gosh. I just quietly went into the lighting booth and moved on. I feel that could be a great like story starter. Yeah, it could. Like what's that late what it's going that, through her mind? There? I don't know. Maybe I she just it. had a moment, but I always had a moment but not the singing and dancing type. I just wanted to sit there and think and mm. enjoy the lights. It was really pretty. That I don't nice. know if I'm explaining it right. <laughs> it probably sounds weird. Know, My friends weren't there. Nice. I just like being by myself sometimes. Sure, your favorite hangout nice. is all alone. I guess. You're like the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just with my mask. Sit alone yeah. in the theater. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. Next, last one. What was your favorite candy? And if not candy, after school snack. Oh, my gosh. We were just talking about candy. Um, Sour Patch Kids. Yes. Forever. Love them. Love them. Have mm-hmm. loved for Forever? many, many years. Yes. All the sour candies. Sure. I also... Uh, but what about Warheads? I was about to say, I also love Warheads. Yes. Oh, they taste like Lemon. throw up to me. So mm. it ruins the effect. <laughs> you know, I get that because it does have like, it gets that little back of your throat yeah. kind of taste. Yeah. It's true. It's true. But if you... I eat them anyway. <laughs> If you could taste the flavor around that, I could see it. Being... Yeah, well, there's a... The... It's just so acidic, the I think. Fla- yeah. No, I liked them, especially the lemon mm. ones. But also, I mean, oh my gosh, I could I could devote a whole 24 hours of just talking about how much I love candy and all the sure. different candies I love. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. But the other um, after-school snack I ate frequently uh-huh. went between still frozen Eggo waffles and... Um, you just snap into it? Yep. Okay. And but wait, wait, wait. Huh. Oh. No syrup? No, nah, just plain. plain. Like okay. I'm too lazy to wait. You just take it out for snap. it to be cooked. So you just take it out, eat okay. it. Okay. And the other one was rolled up bologna. Love it. We didn't ever have bologna, but I would have totally eaten that. <laughs> <laughs> just, but with cheese or just bologna? Sometimes it's cheese. Somewhat, like just yeah. put a little cheese in mm-hmm. there, roll it up, maybe mm-hmm. dip it in a little ketchup. Interesting <laughs> choice. <laughs> 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did okay. you have favorites? Yeah. Juju bees were my favorite. Oh, those get stuck in they your teeth. They do. I love the challenge. <laughs> oh, see, we could talk about candy all day. <laughs> and then um, after that, and I went to Ireland in high school, and I ate fruit gums. Love fruit gums. Tell you me can more. get them at Shaw's. You can find them in the uh, like international section, and they are. They sound, are they like gushers? Not exactly. They don't have like a soft center. Oh, okay. it's just a chewy fruit gum, but it's not a gum like we think. You of swallow gum. it. Yeah, they have black currant. Which I is love black currant. Is one of my favorite parts of the pack. Yes, the like British version of Skittles has mm -hmm. black currant mm -hmm. instead of grape. Yeah, instead of or liquor or whatever it is. And it is yes. so good. So you should pick some of those. Do we up have any listeners them. from across the pond <laughs> willing to send me some Skittles? Send them over. Um, I love fruit gums. I don't, I didn't like wine gums. Nah. Or fruit Ooh. pastilles or whatever they're called. I, I didn't like those either. As far as snacks, every time in my house, Snyder pretzel with cheddar cheese. Still there. Even. Melted on it? You could. Or have it. Or, or just. Well, like a spread or. No, no. Just. Like a piece of cheese. Bite the cheddar. Off. Bite the pretzel. <laughs> a crispy Snyder's pretzel. Yeah. Okay. Or. Yum. Like, I often, I don't know why I did this. Whatever, it was the only thing around, I guess. I'd have, like, a bowl of Rice Krispies, but I'd pour tons of honey into it, so it was more like a Rice Krispie treat. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then just crunch, crunch on that. There you go. It was good. It sounds really good. Yeah. I just had some Rice Krispie treats my sister made. Homemade ones, that's the way <sighs> Maybe that's what I cut up my mouth on. I don't think so. Mm, who knows? It could have been. Those They're are pretty, pretty soft. Yeah, that's true. Anyway. All righty. We did it. That we wasn't did. that bad, actually, that time. It wasn't. Ah, such nice memories of <laughs> all kinds of things. All right. So let's talk about books. Tell me about Kiss Number 8. All right. So this is a graphic novel. Yes. We both read graphic novels this time around. We love them. Uh, we do. It is very, it really feels high school-y to me. I feel like it really captures a lot of the emotional turmoil yeah. That goes along with being in high school and having friends that you like but aren't always really great friends. And I gotcha. People you want to impress versus people who are always standing by you and you're not always nice to them. Yep. And so it's like this pecking order that you kind of really can relate to and just a lot of like trying to learn to be a, a good human and yeah. accept yourself and accept other people. And I think that's what really high school is all about. Oh my gosh. So it's good. I don't know if I want to read it now. I was like, I want to <clears> read that based on the cover, <laughs> but if I have to travel back and experience that, I might not. No, it's good. Do it. <laughs> all right. I read Sleepless and this was, so this was different. I, I just saw the cover and I'd picked it up because I was like, this looks interesting and mm -hmm. um, did not know what to expect. So Poppy is kind of this, she's a royal. And this, I, I was thinking of it as a medieval kingdom, um, though your questions kind of led me to believe maybe I was wrong, <laughs> but we'll get into that. Oh. She has a sleepless, a sleepless. Oh, it's a sleepless? Yeah. And he is named Cyren Cyrenic, and he is a guard who has taken the oath of sleeplessness. Oh, my gosh. To guard her. So he's <gasps> always awake. How romantic. I know. So I shall never slumber. <laughs> exactly. So then um, the new king is crowned. There is an attempt on Poppy's life. Mm. Actually, more than one, really. There's like a plot against her. Cyrenic is doing his work, defending her. However, he is drifting. And that's what sometimes happens to sleepless. They take a nap. No, they start to hallucinate old oh. memories as if they're really happening. Oh and so they're not God. fully consciously there constantly, which could be bad. And then he's like, I don't know. You can't, I can't guard you and keep you safe like oh this. My gosh. And she's like, you can't leave me. Your voice, I the can't, drama. I know. <laughs> I can't tell you what happens at the very end, but. There's a second one, right? Needless to say, they're in love. Like there's more? There's another one? There are more. Oh I have not gosh. read any of them okay, yet. Okay, no, that's good to know, though, for those who are excited. By and it, le it leaves it on a cliffhanger, drama. so, yeah. Cool. So you might want to have the other one handy, because I just had to be like, Jess, can you please order the second one? Hurry. I, I need it. I need it stat. <laughs> I need it stat. I need to know what happens. <laughs> 
All right, so let's talk about kiss number eight and all of the teen angst. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I actually picked, did I pick this book for you? You picked it yourself. Mm -hmm. I've been picking books for Courtney because our schedules are crazy, but mostly Courtney's is crazier than mine. Erin is very kind to me and picks <laughs> books for me. Um, also, I feel like I, I forced you into this project, so it's, it's like another thing to stack on to your other stuff. I love it. If I can help, I try. So um, the thing is, Kirkus called this a rare blend of tender and revolutionary. They slapped a star to review on it. They really thought it was great. Mm-hmm. What do you think they were trying to say by that tender and revolutionary comment? Like, how does that describe the book? Do you think it did, or I were definitely they off think on it that? talks about. Um, I think it talks about identity, specifically gender identity and sexuality, in ways that are new and different. Mm -hmm. So, in that way, I would say it's sort of revolutionary okay. and new and different, not in the way that they play out necessarily in the book, but in the way that it relates to the main character. So okay. um, I think the way that that happens in the book is really nice. And I would say that um, it's one of those, like, things... There are... Every family, I guess, has its secrets and mm -hmm. has its people and um, sort of the way families navigate how they're going to... Dispense information. Dispense information. <laughs> How are they going to, I don't know, handle things that are quote unquote outside of the quote unquote norm? Okay, I gotcha. Guess. Um, and so the way that that plays out in this book, I would say, is, is different than what I've seen before. Okay, cool. Um, and certainly tender. I think it. Oh, yeah. It is a really, in some parts, very painful. Uh huh. Because, you know, you have the main character who is struggling, with struggling this. to understand herself. And then there's mm -hmm. this, like, family secret that she's trying to figure out all on her own because her dad, who is really her best friend, mm -hmm. has, like, totally shut down about, about this that. one particular okay, gotcha, thing. Gotcha. And so she can't get any information out of him. And so he becomes, like, a block, <sighs> even though she admires him so much of and course. loves him so much. and. Um, and so it's really her way of, I don't know, trying to move beyond him while including him. Right. And hope that they can all sort of move Have together. a good relationship yeah. still at the end. Yeah. Got it. All right. So I flipped through it as I was putting it on hold, and I noticed it felt really text-heavy. And maybe it was just in comparison to some that I read recently, especially, I mean, like, Sleepless is not nearly as text-heavy as yours, I don't think. Do you? Just, I'm flipping the pages, but... How'd you feel about it? Were you, like, did you think it was important that it was so thorough with text? It's, or did it, the text draw you in instead of picture? You know how yeah, sometimes it's definitely, that's what happens? I think it's really more text-based. The pictures do help. Um, but it, um, you miss a lot if you miss any bubbles. And you're a text-oriented person. Dialogue. So you're kind of like, do you miss pictures too if you're not? Staying really focused on looking at them, because I find yeah, I, I because find you I do sort that. of like start reading it, sort of like just a regular book, right? And you're like, oh wait a minute, that person <laughs> is doing something. I so yeah, look there. there's also a lot of um, uh, it takes place. I think it takes place like in the early aughts, like 2004. Okay, I think is when it takes place. Okay, and so there's like um, instant messaging and stuff that happens. Okay, gotcha. So you get um that like views of them on their computers right. and like the little things that they're typing to each other. Okay. And so it's definitely um, almost like a multimedia visual. Interesting. Experience, How fun. I cool. guess. Yeah, it is good, but um, it's certainly more like reading a conversation. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. We had, in our last episode, we talked about that Twitter conversation that you had been listening to where some people were saying they had a preference that adults were kind of out of the picture so that the teens could have a full agency and do their thing. And we had a little chit-chat about that. Mm -hmm. I Obviously, the dad is a big part of this. Huge. However, um, what did, do you think it works? I mean, is he in there? Is he off screen enough that you felt like it was about her? 
Can you tell so me, like, to the, me what the balance was? To like? me, it felt very natural. Okay. Um, you can, or I say you, I, I could see myself um, in the characters really easily. Like my parents mm-hmm. were a huge part of my life. Mm-hmm. Right. I, as most. Teens. Teens <laughs> rely on their parents for virtually everything, yes. even though they like to think that they don't. Right. So, um, so the parents in this book are really central characters, okay. very important. Um, but she does have a chance to, she makes some mistakes. She's out, you know. Doing she her does teen thing. Some teen stuff, <clears throat> like she sneaks out. She's mm-hmm. got some friends who are, you know, maybe not as wholesome as her parents would like. Gotcha. She also meets some kids from the public school. Oh my god. She goes to the Catholic school. (laughs) And so like the public school (laughs) kids are like more diverse. Okay, gotcha. They're more sort of accepting of other people. (gasps) They look different. Is that part of her transformation then having them? Yeah, they they become more of yes. Cool like influences in her life which oh, cool. I felt was a little bit unfair to the Catholic school kids of the <laughs> right, world right that's, because yeah. they are all so many and varied right but in the book it serves and I as think like and this one's dating back a little bit like yes, you said exactly maybe it was yes. a reflection so I think it's important because um the dad I think maintains these like sort of boundaries or ideas of tradition that hmm. um even though he's great friends with his daughter, he well, right. can't. It's complicated. He, it's very complicated. He can't really forgive his own family for certain things. So Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I wonder sometimes about that conversation if genre, like if it's, you know, your standard high fantasy, like hero thing, maybe maybe the adults are a little bit more in the background because your main character is like an actual all out going to do all the sword fights and stuff. Right. <laughs> like, that could be part of the conversation. Right, I don't know. Of like, when um, you think of realistic what's fiction, his name? I like think of Peter it Parker. He's yeah. kind of like a <clears throat> older <throat> teen type person, right? He's right. Like nineteen or twenty, maybe. Sure. And he's like he's just like on his own. Sure. I just don't see that being real. But and then again, <laughs> he's got spider abilities. So that's True. not real either. True. All right. Uh, obviously, it's not that easy to describe um, graphic novels, but I do want to talk about artwork. So can you tell me a little bit about it? Can you describe one of your favorite parts? So I can say that the book is all black and white. Okay, cool. Um, And like I said, there, it has some different um, parts. So some of it is as you would expect, like you've got your think talking bubbles and Mm. your characters and they're nicely drawn, I guess. I mean, I guess the they seem very real. It feels like um, photographs to me almost. They almost, <laughs> yeah, it almost does look like, like old photographs. Like black and, gra- old black yes. and white photos. Yeah, the hair and everything looks like that. They're almost a little caricaturish, but not really. Yes, but they're still very, like, emotive. They're, yeah, they're realistic. Faces are very emotive. but um, It's so hard, especially for us, because we're not, like, art majors. Right. So even finding the words for this, I'm having a hard time with mine, too. Yeah, I know. Um and the paper itself is like papery paper, so it it's also not glossy. It's not glossy. Thank okay. you. So that <laughs> paper? also lends itself to this almost newspaper quality. Okay, cool. Um, which is kind of cool. My favorite picture is this one um, little. It's just like a little moment on page one hundred and fifty-two um, where the dad is describing his own mother and it's just this like really tender beautiful picture of a mom just like loving her baby so much and but the text is so opposite Mm. it's like there's a like there's a little text box that says some people just weren't meant to be mothers and then you get this (gasps) visual of sad. this like <clears throat> beautiful young woman in a rocking chair with this like adorable chubby baby just like rocking him and kissing She's, him like, doing her duty yes and, and something and it's like so that part is really heartbreaking because oh you're like oh my gosh like there's so much love in the picture right. and there's so much anger 
oh, in the words. Interesting. That is an interesting part to choose. All right. Wow. Okay. How about um, Rita likes? This one has been gaining a lot of momentum, I think. If people like Kiss Number 8, what else do you think they would like to read? I actually do think they would... Um, also, like the Prince and the Dressmaker, which we which we, we talked, talked about. about already. Yep. Um, because that has some more of those identity or questions. yep identity stuff, and it's really like, oh, that one's like so fun. Highly recommend that one too. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know you loved it. But um, as the crow flies, spinning. Yep, spinning is good. I really like that one. I have read. I as the crow flies. Too. I'm trying to think. That's a quick read. What's nice about this one, I think. I think people who are reluctant also to tr give graphic novels a try yeah. would like this a okay. lot because it is so text heavy mm -hmm. um, and like really dialogue heavy that um, I think it translates well, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like I can imagine it being for people who are like, well, I'm not really into graphic novels. Right. I'd be like, give this a try because mm -hmm. I think you would really like it. This one also seems like it would be good for the older readers, like um, people who have in the past read this one summer. Mm. And then this is like later for yeah, as they've grown. Just because uh, that was like a coming of age summer story. Well, I also I think like that, that adults, um, adult readers of graphic novels would yeah. really enjoy it. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that sounds wonderful. I am going to pick it up once I get around to it. I can't. Yeah, a small pile. Of it's books a little. To read. It's a longy, so okay. you have to devote a little bit of time to it. Gotcha. We'll do. All right. So let's talk about yours <laughs> and yours. I mean, the we're looking at the two books right now, know, and their so differences different. are so striking. Um, the first thing I notice about graphic novels is the art. Yes. So, um, the art of Sleepless mm -hmm. has been defined. As, like, ethereal, dreamy, evocative. So tell me what you thought. I thought exactly those things. I would call it lush. lush. I just think that it's it's vibrant and lush, yeah. Okay. Um, there was an artwork thing that threw me off. Can I tell you what it yes, was? Yes, please do. <laughs> this is saying something just because I actually loved, loved the artwork. All over this book, I was just like, "This is beautiful." Then I turned oh, the, the page cover. And I'm like, this like is go beautiful. to Google right now and look at it because the cover it's is gorgeous. gorgeous. Um, that's but but there's this thing that happens, and I've never noticed it in any other graphic novel. And I was like, "Did they forget mm -hmm. the little faces whenever they're in the background? Sometimes they're completely blank, and I guess that's a style choice." <laughs> so oh. so like there's these little oh, faceless people in the there background. Are. I don't know how I first mm. noticed it. I mean, they're in the background. They're not up front. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be, I think it's because you're supposed to be focusing on the people in the foreground. Mm -hmm. But having them without the face, actually, for me, I was like, wait, did they, why don't they have faces? Did they lose their faces? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that it wasn't part of the story, but then I was trying to think of like, I was just like, is that the choice? Now, how small do the faces have to be before they don't get a face? Okay. So I then started to. Yes. Well, how small? I didn't get an answer because sometimes there was a bigger face that had a face. Well, I think that's a really smaller good point face to make because face. it encourages people who maybe are not art majors right. or like super into art to notice things because everything is intentional. Right, because I'm sure it's someone knows the answer and they're like, it's because you're not supposed to be looking back at those people. It doesn't matter if they have a face or not. Or but maybe it means me, something like, else, though. Like, it could be some, saying something And then I thought, oh, about maybe the if the person's not talking they and they're in the background, they don't get a face. But then there was mm -hmm. one that was talking and he's tiny and he's far away and he still doesn't have a face. Oh, jeez. But then when he comes up close, he has a face. So oh. it's just distance. It's just distance. Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's just to show how far maybe away they the are. Maybe the artist... Maybe they have far away glasses. face blindness. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so they, that's how it is that's for how they them. See they in real life. See that's how I see in real life. <laughs> they're up close. It was just so interesting because I'm just like literally in love with all of the illustrations in this book. But then I'm also like, why? Why do some of these people not have any faces? Mm. So it was just kind of a thing that I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> I want the answer too. I well, guess I'll go look it up. We can always um, research that <laughs> at more. one of the artists. <laughs> and ask. I'm afraid because then I'm going to sound like an idiot. I don't just think like, it's, it's because idiotic. they're far away and you can't see people's faces oh, when they're maybe. far away. All right. It could just be as simple as that. All I right. I think well. that's what it is. All right. Well, okay. so anyway. <laughs> but it is lush. <laughs> that it, was my It does. It almost looks like a stained glass window. It's gorgeous. Um, 
So it's listed, Sleepless mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. on Amazon's dystopian graphic yeah, novels what... list at number 53, that's which I weird. think is pretty high. Okay, so that's... And romance graphic novel at number 197. Um, would you call it either of those things? Uh, romance, 100%. Okay. 100%. Dystopian? No, I, I didn't so cross my mind. I don't know how mind. it wound up there. I did not cross my mind. I thought fantasy. I thought dystopian. Um, I even, yeah, I mean, I didn't think sci-fi. I thought fantasy with a sleepless guy. Mm-hmm. Romance, 100%. It's ridiculously romantic that these two are uh, bound together through this oath and he guards her. And I'm just uh, like, yeah. at first I'm like, eh, I'm not going to like this. Then I was just like, oh, God, oh, I hope they end up together. Oh, my gosh. Now I want to know if they do. Um, so you would not say it's like genre defi- defying. I don't. It's like a romance. I think it's a like a fantastic fantasy romance. romance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Pretty cut and dry. I never would have thought dystopian. Well, okay. Then maybe Unless just, they're being forced. I guess maybe if the so the wrong. sleepless are being forced to be sleepless, but I didn't get a sense uh, of that yet. And that might come out oh, later. Maybe that'll be like a different. Yeah, they may. That might come out later because there are multiple they don't volumes. Like being sleepless, maybe. I don't know. Well, it seemed like see, his duty, know. and it was like an honor to become a sleepless or something. Mm. I don't know. All right. Well, Interesting. All right. Well, I'll update that later. Yes. If let it us know. A dystopian. I don't know. <laughs> huh. it, if it transforms. Um. Okay, so even just from the cover of the book, Mm -hmm. I can see that um, the world that Sleepless takes place in is not just your, like, white, European, medieval-looking place, although it does seem medieval. It does look like, and even their names kind of, Cyrenic, feels... Like that. Right. So representation is a huge deal. Right. Um, can you speak a little bit about that? Like maybe just who lives in this world? Right. What's and... interesting is there are, yeah, all, it's very diverse, lots of skin tones. Um, so much so that it's it's not really, um, there's no attention brought to it, which I liked. Great. Um, I just was enjoying all the different people and characters and even in their court like courtly scenes you know when there's like a ball or something it's just a really nice diverse I'm cast. I'm so glad there are balls. There are <laughs> well and big feasts I guess. I don't remember if there was dancing but there's definitely a feast because she almost gets poisoned at it. <gasps> oh my. I know. So yeah there's um, there's no attention brought to it. Uh, there's a lot of diversity and actually that's one of the when I saw the cover it was interesting because it was familiar and yet different which is why I picked it up. I was like oh this is really interesting. Um, so yeah it's very diverse. That's awesome. Yeah. Is there a moment or a page or, like, an image that really sticks with you even after you've finished? Because, like, if I were to ask you, did you like it, Mm -hmm. what would be the first image that pops into your mind? Because that's, like... Well, I'm going to say the end, but I can't tell you about it because I don't want you to know how it ends because that would be a spoiler. okay. But I'm going to pick the same... You know how you picked a memory? Mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing. Mm. For me, the biggest... The picture I thought was most intriguing was this memory, because it was the memory of the oath they took. So there's all this, like, grand language. <clears throat> and he's making this sleepless vow, and they're holding hands, and they are surrounded by skulls. <gasps> See at the top oh there? Oh, my god! Right, so there's this, like, moment oh. happening that's really... Why this, I have this to read this now, because, like, why moment, skulls? And then a lot of skulls are there. Well, apparently some of them just drift off into sleep forever. <laughs> and... Uh, Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, it's creepy. Very powerful, though. But the beginning has a lot of skulls, too, which I liked immediately, too. And I think what's interesting about the skulls is that they're in such juxtaposition to all the color and the rest of the book. It's all that black and white and gray with the bones and skulls. Oh. Is that a person hugging a She is hugging her skeleton? her father's crypt, I guess. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Wow. So, yeah, that would be the picture I would choose. Um, since I think your Rita Likes question is such a great question, I'm going to steal it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask about Rita Likes, but also I wonder if we should like make a little reading list or something to put on the website. Yeah. At least of like. The ones that we do Rita Likes for? Yeah. Or maybe as easy as dropping it in a comment. I'm starting to see that there are like strange connections between various. That's true. Things. So like sleepless, I feel 
is like a pa- like a palace drama. Right, that's true. Which I feel also goes with the Prince and the that's Dressmaker. That's true. I didn't even think of that one. Um, hmm. So, I don't know, maybe we can make some weird connections. That's true. And also, I, I like when I'm looking at graphic novels, I'm like, should I recommend more graphic novels? Or do they want a novel that has these same elements in it? You know, when you're thinking oh. about Rita Likes, you could also do that That's that true. Way. I mean, Though just I add another thing to the pile. I know, right. We'll just do Anyway, we'll let us know going. if you want that, and yeah. maybe we can do something about it. Totally. So, anyway, what so would you Rita say? So, Rita Likes, yes. right. So, for Sleepless. Um, <clears throat> the one that I have read recently that I th- that sprung to mind immediately was The Black Bull of Norway. Mm-hmm. by Kat Seaton. And that one bothered me a little bit more because I'm like, why is she going with this black bull? And he's so toxic and whatever. But it's one of those weird, like, oh, they're bound mm-hmm. together again, just like this one mm-hmm. in those old medieval <laughs> stories. You yes. get a lot of that. Um, so for duty or honor or whatever, there were a lot of people being bound together, I guess. Or for, <sighs> yeah, it's what. almost like Arthurian, too. I guess so, Are yeah. Are there any, like, King Arthur ones? Well... I don't know. I can't think of the King Arthur one right now that we have on our shelf. We might. Um, But the other one I was thinking of was by the same um, uh, Sarah Vaughn's Eternal Empire. Mm. There's like a duo uh, that has to take over the empire and they have like this magic that works together that... And Sarah make Vaughan. it happen. Mm-hmm. And then the other one was Afar by Leila Del Duca, who did the... Oh, another yes, connection. Yes, mm-hmm. I think she did the illustrations, because this one has, like, illustrations, and then the um, the editor and colors, and then the letters person, oh, you know, so yeah. they're all listed. But mm-hmm. Leila Del Duca was the artist for Sleepless, and she has also worked on Afar. I think she was the writer and artist for Afar, but I thought that one might fit the bill as well. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, what's up next? All right. We haven't done contemporary novels recently, so I was thinking we'd do those. Mm -hmm. I picked one before, uh, well, the other day. I picked The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben Mm. Felipe. And then right before we came over, I picked one for you, which was called (laughs) This is Kind of an Epic Love Story by Karen Callender. Can't wait. I know. We'll see. We'll see if they're good. We haven't read it since I think we were talking about the prints. So right. we'll dip into those. Yeah. All right. And remember, if you get a chance to answer our three questions, those are, what was, oh, was or is there anything you tried to hide about yourself? And number two is, where was or is your favorite place to hang out? And how about what was or is your favorite candy or after school snack we could talk about that one all day as you know Mm -hmm. so we'd love to hear your recommendations we'll try them we'll have like a candy testing oh my gosh yes based on recommendations i love it my oh sad my mouth is actually watering thinking about this (laughs) likewise (laughs) if you have any questions about reading recommendations or library life please write to us at teen title talk at gmail.com and we'll read a few of our listener responses next time Thank you for joining us for Teen Title Talk. This podcast is brought to you by the Dairy Public Library and Dairy Cam, Dairy Community Access Media, empowering independent voices. As always, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and Google Play. Just search for Teen Title Talk. And don't forget to hit follow so you can always hear the latest episode. Our theme was created and performed by Bandit Starling. Until next time. Bye. Bye.